uh, Cloud Foundry uh, components uh, by availability zone and OpenStack. Uh, on this slide, uh, uh, we provide uh, a planning uh, sheet uh, for uh, Cloud Foundry jobs. Uh, and uh, we play, I place uh, uh, only some of the jobs uh, to give an idea of how the plank uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is done. Uh, the, values, uh, the values in row uh, total uh, represent the total number of uh, uh, instances in uh, uh, all availability zones. Also, we have totals uh, uh, for uh, each of three availability zones. And also, uh, we have num uh, total number of uh, uh, memory and uh, CPU. Uh, the cells that are highlighted in yellow uh, are the Cloud Foundry jobs that we recommend to place uh, in uh, three availability zones. Uh, there are service registry uh, called ETCD, uh, which, which uh, should have uh, three instances uh, to fit HA requirements and uh, a log aggregator traffic controller that, is, that we recommend to have at least one instance in every zone. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, application uh, runners uh, that uh, may be a DA or uh, Diego cells. And the major resource consumers in Cloud Foundry deployment uh, are uh, application uh, runners. <laughs> Some of the components uh, of Cloud Foundry deployment, they do not support uh, by default uh, uh, AHA uh, configuration. And uh, on this slide, uh, I highlighted uh, uh, some of these uh, 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 components. Uh, one of uh, uh, component is uh, the uh, uh, cloud controller and uh, UA database, databases. Uh, to have it um, uh, in uh, kind of uh, high availability mode, uh, we can uh, configure a Bosch uh, resurrection process uh, for database uh, instance, or we can use uh, uh, external uh, MariaDB Galera cluster. Uh, other components in the deployment are uh, Bosch uh, director uh, for Cloud Foundry and uh, Cloud Service uh, services autom automation. Uh, uh, Bosch is not, uh, is not directly a part of uh, Cloud Foundry, uh, but it is used to uh, uh, manage deployment of Cloud Foundry, uh, so we have to uh, provide a plan how to recover uh, a single uh, instance virtual machine. Another non HA component is uh, a Blob Store. Uh, by default, uh, NFS blob store uh, in the Cloud Foundry deployment is single instance. And uh, um, we can use uh, object storage uh, to place uh, uh, blobs, uh, uh, for example, OpenStack Swift in our case. Uh, let's take a look at the, some of the details uh, for um, uh, these uh, um, components. Uh, so the, what does it uh, look like? What does a plan for recovering Bosch Director uh, look like? The approach is uh, quite straightforward. Uh, uh, you you uh, need to locate a Bosch uh, state file and uh, the deployment manifest, and also the persistent disk for Bir uh, Bosch virtual machine. Uh, it, it should be available. Uh, first, uh, we have to edit uh, this uh, Bosch state file, uh, leaving only several uh, properties. And then we deploy uh, uh, Bosch and attach persistent disk. Uh, in our tests, uh, uh, according to this scenario, uh, Bosch Director Virtual Machine uh, uh, was uh, recreated uh, uh, in around 25 minutes. Uh, as an alternative, uh, uh, we can use OpenStack via migration. Uh, in case of uh, persistent and ephemeral drives are stored uh, uh, in OpenStack uh, uh, self storage. And uh, during the uh, VM uh, migration process or recovery process, uh, uh, 
ephemeral and persistent disk, uh, disk, they can be attached to a new virtual machine. Uh, also, OpenStack Ceph, uh, uh, it, makes, uh, it makes possible to support live migration of virtual machine uh, between, uh, uh, in, in one availability zone. And uh, as the last example of um, configuring uh, uh, HA uh, uh, support for uh, non-HA component in Cloud Foundry, uh, I provided a sample of uh, uh, deployment manifest uh, to set up on stack Swift as a provider for uh, Blob Store. Uh, we have to define credentials and URL to connect to OpenStack and also set a temporary key. Uh, and temporary key, it's uh, one of the um, uh, value which has to be unique uh, for uh, uh, every Cloud Foundry deployment, if let's say on one OpenStack, we have uh, two, uh, uh, two installations of uh, uh, Cloud Foundry. And it should work. <coughs> In the uh, next, uh, on, on next slides, I would like to highlight uh, um, uh, information about how uh, we can configure uh, uh, process to uh, restore database uh, virtual machine. Uh, in, in our case, um, uh, we have a single instance uh, of database that uh, contains a cloud controller and a UA database. Uh, the Bosch resurrection, it is a feature that allows to uh, have a, a recovery of a virtual machine uh, using uh, Bosch. Uh, and uh, um, when we <coughs> test uh, uh, resurrection process, um, it takes around uh, two minutes uh, to mark uh, a virtual machine as unresponsive. Uh, and uh, uh, around uh, uh, three of, uh, or four minutes uh, to recover, uh, to re uh, recreate a virtual machine using a Bosch resurrection process. Uh, but we have to uh, take into account uh, the side effect uh, when we stop a physical machine uh, intentionally and uh, draw Bosch resurrection uh, uh, property configured for virtual machines uh, running on this physical node. Um, uh, Bosch Resurrector tries to recreate uh, all virtual machines uh, 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 in the same availability zone, and uh, there should be enough resources uh, within one availability zone of OpenStack uh, to uh, recreate virtual machines if uh, they are configured with uh, Bosch Resurrection. Uh, as an alternative, uh, to uh, such type of uh, recovery uh, for database instance, uh, uh, we can use external uh, MariaDB uh, cluster for uh, uh, all CF databases. Uh, now let's take a look at the Cassandra storage. In our case, we use OpenStack uh, Ceph uh, with replication, and uh, the data blocks, they are distributed uh, among all storage nodes. Uh, this means that uh, one, uh, that a single data uh, read request uh, triggers, uh, triggers uh, several network operations. Uh, first, the application uh, on this slide, it's, uh, it's an API. Um, it uh, calls Cassandra coordinator a node. Uh, and the second, on the second uh, step, Cassandra coordinator a node contacts, contacts uh, Cassandra data node. Uh, that uh, should uh, have a requested uh, uh, data role. The Cassandra uh, node, uh, data node runs on specific compute node in OpenStack, uh, and the third step, uh, the compute node talks to OpenStack Ceph controller, and the finally, uh, OpenStack uh, Ceph controller uh, reads data blocks from OpenStack uh, uh, storage nodes. So there are uh, four steps and uh, there are four network uh, operations to retrieve uh, a single row of data. Uh, and it uh, takes us to uh, pros and cons of using OpenStack uh, Ceph as, uh, the storage, uh, for, uh, as the storage option for Cassandra. 
Uh, with Ceph, uh, with OpenStack Ceph, uh, uh, we can deploy all cloud services in OpenStack, and it simplifies uh, deployment and management uh, 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 because uh, services, uh, service deployment can be automated, for example, by Bosch. And uh, the approach to deploy and manage uh, cloud services uh, uh, is unified. Uh, also, OpenStack Ceph, uh, it is uh, distributed, scalable, and replicated storage. So the failure of uh, one physical drive or, or one physical uh, node uh, does not uh, affect the availability of uh, data blocks. And uh, uh, as the last but not least point, uh, uh, we can mention that the price of storage is uh, uh, such type of storage uh, is quite cheap comparing to uh, hardware storage area uh, network systems. Uh, what about the cons? Um, in uh, self storage, we have an additional replication uh, factor, and totally uh, with uh, Cassandra data, uh, if we use uh, a replica factor of uh, three, which is recommended to replica factor in Cassandra, uh, we have uh, six uh, times data one data block uh, replicated in, uh, uh, from Cassandra. And uh, the performance of uh, cluster, it heavily depends on the uh, network performance. So it is recommended uh, in OpenStack deployment to use uh, 10 gigabit uh, uh, networks uh, for, uh, for uh, storage services. Uh, in our case, uh, we decided uh, to uh, benchmark Cassandra in OpenStack to understand whether it can satisfy uh, the project uh, requirements. Uh, we used Cassandra stress test tool, uh, and uh, the, a cluster, a sample cluster of six nodes. Uh, there was a simple replication uh, strategy uh, with a factor of uh, three, and uh, the network uh, in OpenStack uh, for all uh, compute and data nodes, uh, for all compute and storage nodes, uh, it was uh, one gigabit network. Uh, every Cassandra node was configured with uh, eight uh, virtual CPU and uh, 32 gigabyte of memory. Uh, and uh, the ratio between uh, memory and uh, CPU uh, is four, and uh, it is one of uh, the recommended uh, ratio uh, for uh, Cassandra nodes. Uh, the test uh, was conducted uh, uh, with just one object in Cassandra, and the approximate test duration was around uh, five minutes. So, um, uh, uh, on the next slide, I provided uh, uh, s uh, some of the figures from, from these tests. Uh, you can see there are three types of tests uh, for uh, write, uh, read, and uh, uh, read and write operation. Uh, stress test tool, it measures um, uh, throughput as number of operations per second uh, and several latencies uh, uh, that shows the distribution of response time uh, during the test. Uh, on the slide, we put a uh, number of operations per second, uh, uh, average latency, 99% uh, latency, maximum and minimum latencies. Uh, all the latencies, they are measured in uh, milliseconds. Uh, in terms of uh, latency deviation, we may be interested uh, in 99% uh, uh, latency and uh, maximum latency. Um, these numbers, they uh, can give you an idea what to examine in details in terms of uh, storage and uh, Cassandra nodes configuration. Uh, this, types of, uh, this type of tests uh, can be executed very quickly uh, uh, after we install the cluster. And uh, it, it can give an insight uh, what uh, uh, kind of performance is to expect from, from Cassandra cluster. Uh, let's say if our requirements uh, is to serve uh, 10,000 operations uh, per second uh, in, uh, uh, with average latency less than 10 seconds, uh, then uh, Cassandra deployment uh, in uh, uh, OpenStack uh, can easily satisfy uh, these requirements. Uh, but uh, we have uh, also to consider um, 
Cassandra data model and uh, the application access patterns because they are also heavily influence uh, the performance of uh, 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 cluster and uh, applications. Uh, other recommendations for Cassandra uh, planning inclu uh, include uh, effective data size uh, for one Cassandra node uh, is from uh, three to five uh, terabytes. And uh, total number of uh, tables uh, should be less uh, uh, than, uh, should, should vary from, uh, let's say, uh, 500 to 1,000 tables uh, to make uh, compaction process in Cassandra uh, effective. And uh, uh, this free space uh, on every Cassandra node should uh, be around from 30 to 50%. Uh, to allow compaction process uh, to complete. As uh, for the recommended uh, storage, uh, the data stacks uh, recommends uh, to run Cassandra on uh, bare metal uh, using SSD drives in uh, 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 JBOD uh, mode. So uh, we just uh, uh, provide uh, the uh, drives uh, to Cassandra nodes, configure drives for, for Cassandra nodes, and. Uh, uh, all the data dis distribution is uh, um, uh, uh, is handled by Cassandra process. So uh, these are some of the technical as aspects uh, uh, from the project so that I decided to share. Uh, and the last part of my presentation, I would like to say a few words about uh, uh, Ultra Steam contribution uh, from this project. Uh, so even uh, when we work in such restricted area uh, um, uh, as healthcare, we can find a way to uh, spread uh, um, uh, ideas and experience. Uh, during the project, uh, uh, we created a Cassandra service broker uh, that supports um, uh, authentication and case space provisioning. Actually, at, this, at uh, the beginning of the project, uh, we uh, researched all over the internet. Uh, there, are, uh, there were, at that time, uh, several projects, but uh, they uh, didn't uh, provide uh, all the uh, uh, service broker uh, conf uh, functionality. And uh, uh, right now, we're updating it uh, on a regular basis to accommodate all the changes for, for uh, latest Cassandra version. Uh, also, we continuously improve uh, ELK uh, stack. Uh, specifically, we added a number of uh, uh, input and output. Uh, and we also provided um, um, extensions uh, to, lock, to lock stash. Uh, as an example, uh, uh, there is a lock stash, uh, lock stash extension to merge uh, multiple lines of uh, uh, um, exceptions and stack traces in one message in Elasticsearch. Uh, this helps to easily to find uh, the full context of any application error in, uh, in Kibana. Uh, also, we developed uh, a web tool that allows uh, developers to interact with uh, and to work with Cassandra and to run any uh, Cassandra uh, statements uh, and also store these statements and the history. Uh, uh, this type of uh, web tool is useful uh, in a private cloud uh, when uh, there is no direct access uh, from developer machine to Cassandra uh, uh, data node. Uh, to develop this project, we were inspired by DataStax Dev Center, which is a desktop tool and uh, um, uh, to work with uh, uh, Dev Center, uh, you, need a, you, you have to connect directly to the Cassandra uh, cluster. But in case of the uh, private uh, cloud, uh, which is uh, located behind the firewall, uh, um, uh, there is no uh, way to connect directly to Cassandra data nodes. Uh, and uh, we made this project uh, uh, Cloud Foundry ready, so um, it, it can be deployed to uh, Cloud Foundry as a regular uh, web application. Um, these are some of the information that I would like to share. Um, uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'll be glad to answer your questions. <laughs>